now I have the Sylvania Color TV moved up the steps. I did this all by myself and I had to turn it end over end. I turned it end over end on the top in order to get it up the stairs. That's about the only way to do this by oneself. These stairs have rubber tread, so there wasn't any damage to the finish, but sometimes when I've done this, I've put protection on the unit to, on the top, like a blanket, to prevent any scratching when I turned it end over end. <laughs> but I've got it up here, and I'll take it down to the room and take a look at it. Here's the Sylvania Color TV now in my room. This is probably from around 1968 or so. Here's the control panel. It's got power tuning. Get a better look at it if I reposition it. The CRT looks like it may be an RCA black matrix. Uh, it may be a replacement. There was a mid-90s Sony sitting on top of this set in the living room. So I figure it was probably used until at least then, so it probably has a CRT replacement. Looking at the back, some of the screws are missing. You can see back here, there's missing screws, so it means it's had a lot of repairs done on it. Also there's some missing screws, screws walled out there, and we'll take the back off and see. Uh, see what we've got in here. Here's the inside of the Sylvania chassis. It's got some transistors and uh, some tubes. Looks like the, the IF stages are transistorized. Six BK4. It's got six by nine speakers. And my suspicions on the picture tube were right. This is an RCA highlight, which is a brand new color picture tube. It's black matrix, 23V ALP22. Installed, uh, let's see, manufactured in the 52nd week of 1975. So I bet you this set got a lot of use as if it's only a 68 and they installed a new CRT in 75. But at least it has a better chance of having a good CRT. There's no booster on the uh, filament. It's got power tuning. Here's the motor. But it does not have remote control. Here's where the remote uh, unit would be. Looks like there's some labels in here for tubes. 6GY6 replace 1073 Let's see what this is Let's see replace 6LU8 replace 6JS6C this may be an owner that did his own TV maintenance I don't know okay there's a tube let's, this looks like a damper tube okay here it is Let's make sure that the set actually has a damper in the circuit. Well, it doesn't. We have to put the damper back in. Realistic lifetime. You know, that's probably why they said it didn't work. Uh, <laughs> they, uh, the thing said that the set didn't work, so let's put the damper in and see, see if we get some uh, high voltage. The power cord is now attached, so I'm gonna turn on the set. I have not turned this on at all. I have no idea. Uh, how it's going to work. Give it a shot here. Okay, channel indicator lights just burned out. Let's come back around here. Okay, looks like we've got filament voltage. Let's see if we get any picture. Well, 
no picture. I'm gonna need a little more troubleshooting, I guess. Here's the flyback transformer. Looks like it may have overheated. I need to see if there's a replacement for this. I'm gonna try measuring DC voltage through the flyback transformer with the horizontal output plate lead disconnected. If you, me you can measure the DC voltage through there, of course not with the tube connected. There's about 6,000 volts AC there with the tube connected. But with the plate cap off, you'll just read the B plus voltage through the flyback uh, if you've got continuity through it. So let's check it out. Okay, we do have DC voltage at the flyback. 416 volts, very high DC voltage. Well, but that's about what it, that's about the normal voltage supplied by the B plus supply. Needless to say, you have to be uh, very careful when working with these circuits powered up. I always like to make the connections with alligator clip leads so I don't ever have to go probing in live circuits. We're now going to do one more quick test to check for high voltage AC. This is a neon lamp taped to a, a pen and uh, it'll glow if you got high voltage. And see, you can see here it's glowing so we do have high voltage at the uh, horizontal output tube plate. Note that no direct connection is made. This is a safe way to, to check for high voltage. I'm also going to lay it, let's see here, I guess I can't get it, uh, can't get it on the flyback lead. But usually if you've got high voltage here, the rest of the system is working. So it may be a bad HV rectifier tube or something. Just have to do a little more troubleshooting. It looks like the horizontal output part of the circuit is functional. The lamp has to be neon, not incandescent. Okay, I checked for high voltage by discharging the CRT, and there is none. There's no spark when the CRT is discharged. Also, I held the pen up to the flyback lead, or I didn't hold it, I just laid it near it and got back from it. and. Well, the, the neon lamp lit up when it was placed near the flyback lead, so there is AC high voltage getting to the rectifier. I put in a new uh, rectifier tube, a new uh, 6BK4 tube, still don't have anything, so it may be that there's a problem in the 6BK4 primary circuit, the grid, the cathode circuit. You just have to uh, measure the voltages of the 6BK4. But it uh, looks like the flyback is generating HV AC, but no DC is getting to the CRT.